Hello viewers and welcome back to Battle Plan American Civil War. I'm your host Kibuji Chu and well, some odd developments have been happening with the campaign mode for this game. Namely, uh, the fact that for whatever reason my save files seem to just shift around magically. And with that said, for whatever reason we're back to this setup. I had originally wanted to set it up so that we'd uh, win the first mission at first bull run. Technically, I guess the game doesn't uh, you know consider us dealing 10 10 times the historical amount of damage, well taking the historical amount of damage for ourselves, but dealing 10 times it to the enemy as a devastating victory. Uh, but I mean historically yes, the Union did lose the first battle of Bull Run, and well I suppose we'll just take this and go with it. Seeing as how the game seems to swap these save files around, I wanted to make uh, like I said that previous file, but uh, for whatever reason the game just seemed to de delete that when I uh, hit the back button here. Anyhow, inside the second battle here we'll be fighting for for Pittsburgh landing. Uh, I'll give you the, the history briefing here once again, although it doesn't really tell us much about the background information to it. But the Pittsburgh landing uh, background or battle here is a defensive battle. Well, uh, I believe we'll see Sherman, Sherman something, something Sherman, I forgot his first name, fighting a defensive battle for a uh, the heights on this map over here. And again, uh, these maps will be out of three objectives currently our objectives are to hold the uh, at least two of the objectives when the game uh, time runs out so uh, this is going to be a heavy defensive mission namely it will also join up with uh, it, the, the namely it also feature reinforcements in that as this battle continues or rather when the battle starts we start off with 24 units the Confederates start off with 28 and well when the battle ends here we should be uh, getting rather inside the middle of the battle I'm say here uh, we should be getting 16 units as a reinforcement so Overall, uh, we have quite an interesting map. The Confederates will be attacking from the top of the map, which in this case would be south. Kind of a, a slightly unintuitive in that, in my opinion there. But I suppose it works, and I mean, uh, so long it does that, I guess it doesn't really need to do with anything else. Uh, namely, we get to see some more, you know, infantry and all that on this map, but we also see a few unique units as well. We have a nice pair of, from the looks of it, ironclad gunships available to us here. And these were the old Civil War boats, really, really heavily armored, decent uh, armored armament and from the looks of it we can use them as like pretty much these um, these mobile artillery pieces to do our bidding here so we can give them some commands and i think we'll get them to guard our left flank here and in the man in the uh, in the meantime we'll plan our defense inside uh, well this local area here so anyhow uh, all of the slightly lighter areas i believe are part of a hill so all of this stuff is good elevation for defending. And I think what we'll do uh, by we're at the start of the game here is that the enemy will be available. We're just right at the gates at the very start of the battle. So I'm going to pull my troops back up until these uh, heights. Now, this is going to be a bit of a desperate last stand until the uh, until those troops come to reinforce us. So we'll get our troops to just in general bulk up at the best positions and then as you can see here the game has some of those pre-built uh, dugouts for us at the Hornet's Nest and I hope to pull back there in just a short amount of time. And I really want to hold this church objective so I'm going to try to uh, get these units to move forwards by a bit here. This gunner raid doesn't seem to have any uh, any fortifications. So we'll move them up too, and in general, we will just uh, get our supply train to move up as well. And I think we'll commence the battle like that. So, I think I'll uh, turn down the SFX volume there. Uh, but anyhow, from the looks of it, yeah, the Confederates will just uh, arrive right next to our positions, launching a massive counter or a massive attack right away. And with that said, this will be a very desperate last stand, seeing as how they are just bringing so many troops to our uh, battle. We can use this route to our rally command three times per battle, and this will give our troops the extra chance of rallying once they're broken and fleeing, like this cavalry unit over here, or alternatively these uh, infantry over here, infantry units over here. In general, I mean it's still pretty early inside the campaign. 
And these uh, Confederate troops are definitely superior in quality compared to our guys. So with that said, we'll be we'll have to be extra careful in dealing with them and hopefully just in general holding our positions here as best as we can again. So see what we can do. Hopefully we can launch a few isolated or local counterattacks to go into the enemy's flanks. Namely, we can also use our general as a uh, attacking unit. It's not, say, the wisest idea, but at the same time, you know, if you need to do it, you need to do it, right? And overall, just a massive counterattack here. With our troops, yikes, just going all over the place. I'm gonna see whether or not we can provide uh, them with some support from the gunships. Looks like the gun batteries over there are already committed. And the area over here around Review Field is just a mosh pit of death right now. Let's pause the game, let's pause the game here and let's see what we can do. So it looks like Herr uh, Mc McLaren's troops over here are marching against yeah, Clanton's Bra Clanton Bragg's Corps. Three star unit, or three chevron unit. And come to think of it, like, yeah, it, it seems to be the only three-star unit around, apart from their artillery's back, artillery units back here. Hmm. So if, we, if yeah, we also have this uh, unit isolated, so we sh if we kill it off, that should definitely ease off the pressure uh, on our lines here for us, at least by a little bit. And we'll just uh, see what we can do here to, of course, gather up the, the routed troops and uh, send them back into the fray. So it looks like the situation is starting to stabilize out a bit. These guys are true heroes. Uh, the unknown core over here and these two, these two unknown cores are just down there. Look at that, 77 men out of the, 50 of the 1500 over there just staying alive really. We're, we're actually not really doing that at all. Right, so it looks like we've lost the fields area. So we'll pull those guys back. And I think inside this area, things are, for the most part, fine. I'll try to bring up the guns up to uh, Shiloh Church here. And we'll see what else uh, we can do here to make a few movements. And I'll get these gunships again with their gun support ability to fire the cannons. And really just to uh, see how much damage they can do. Currently, we have 15 units on the field. We lost, uh, well, 14 now. We lost 10. They lost uh, 9, and they have 19 units. So once these reinforcements come around, hopefully we can turn the tides of the battle. But for now, we'll have to uh, conserve our resources here. So we'll see what we can do. Namely, whether or not we can uh, hopefully resupply these guns at the, the church location with this baggage train. And uh, hopefully get it uh, back in action and firing, because currently it's in a great location to cover the rest of our troops. I think we'll do a small offensive here. And as you can see, I mean, these battles do definitely scale up in time. This battle is actually lasting for quite a while longer than, say, the uh, the previous battle. However, at the same time, it looks like the uh, Confederate AI has uh, practically exhausted all of their troops. Although that's uh, not to say anything of our own manpower reserves as well. And it looks like there's uh, finally, oh, perfect reinforcements coming on the field. And, uh, well, yeah, this area should be, well, Grant is currently uh, here on the field commanding troops. And I assume this is, uh, do we get a second HQ unit? No. Hmm. I wonder where Sherman's uh, troops are as well, because he should also have a bunch of uh, guys around here. Well, anyhow, it looks like we managed to hold uh, Pittsburgh Landing. And perhaps this is uh, only the end of the first part. We're now reinforced, where our numbers are back up to 16 units. So it's a bit of an increase, but not, of course, at maximum capacity. And oh, would you look at that. Some lovely, lovely uh, rain effects coming onto the battlefield as well. The Battle of Pittsburgh landing here was a multi-day affair. It was, I believe, one entire day and then the half of another one. So with that said, uh, what had happened was that during the first day, of course, the uh, the Union folks over here were, were quite uh, badly sieged and under attack. And uh, with the reinforcements coming in, uh, they managed to launch a counterattack during the next day, I believe. Again, I'm not terribly sure with uh, Civil War history. It's a 
interesting period of time that I'd like to know or rather uh, get into some more. Although, uh, of course, that takes uh, some time and effort, and here we are playing a few games about that. So, uh, it's a learning experience for both you guys and myself. I wonder whether or not these campfire locations are actually indicative of, say, the enemy's positions. Oh, actually, on this camp, on this uh, little timer, the, I did notice that. I thought the black portions would have been our reinforcement uh, timings, but evidently they seem to be the uh, the timings for night. All right, so it looks like uh, we have one more entire battle for us to uh, do tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, I think I'll just let the troops have their little campfires and uh, get ready for that. And let's check up these uh, cue card things. Oh, that's why the enemy has killed Commander Sherman's corps, which would no longer, which would obviously be uh, Sherman. So that's why we didn't see him. We managed to secure all of the objectives, but it looks like we lost, yeah, quite a few commanders and, of course, a lot of men. And it looks like the ground, of course, uh, being raining and all, uh, is now quite mushy and all units are going to move slowlier than before here. And it looks like we gained another uh, big group of troops here. An entire little army here that we can send, of course, to our aid. And there we go. It looks like this mission was uh, quite, a, quite a fast little one. It was right around... I don't know, has it been like 10 minutes or so yet? Hmm. Either way, that'll be that, and ooh, should probably cancel these move orders beforehand and reissue them a, uh, a different type so that they'll just use this bridge, hopefully. And in the meantime, it looks like we have all of our objectives, we have our supply wagons up here, and our guns are firing at the enemy down here. And I think overall we should be able to uh, call it a victory nonetheless. From the looks of it, the AI was a little too aggressive in their attack. They, uh, they definitely fought admirably, and they took down quite a few of our troops, but at the end of the day, it looks like they overexerted themselves, so they don't have, say, you know, their full military might left anymore. And now that we have our reinforcements, of course, there's not too much that they can do about that. So we'll get our troops here to shore up the defenses over here. And I think that'll be it for uh, this battle over here, really. Would you look at that? Looks like our guns over here are just chasing the enemy back. Oh, and that big group of... what is that? Reserve cavalry. Hmm, that's actually quite a large group. And it's a three chevron unit, meaning that that is a highly uh, veteran unit as well. I'm gonna see whether or not we can flank around and perhaps... Uh, routed like that. There we go, we broke them and we, huh, managed to eliminate all of those veterans, of course. I know this is something that I did not see. Looks like they're making a jab for, uh, ooh, two of our locations here. Hopefully we can get our infantrymen across the bridge before uh, anything bad happens. I noticed that the game's AI had a few issues moving over bridges, and, um, from the looks of it, these messenger icons, they, they just seem to take the, the most direct path to the uh, to their lo in intended formation. But again, that's a simulated portion of the game, so I'm not really sure if the, uh, the visuals match up to what actually is occurring. It's a, it's a common thing in war games where sometimes just due to the, the complexity of the situation, the, the, the simulations were amongst other things, the visuals might not match perfectly with what actually happens here. Unfortunately, this uh, bridge problem is still quite annoying though. So we had to grab each and every single one of the, uh, the troops individually to send over this bridge. I suppose you could call it uh, bridge uh, traffic, if you will. We'll try to get these guys assembled because there is a, well, still one unit. Gladen, Gladen Bragg's Corps, 2,340 men, are still marching on our location. 
ample reserves pouring over the bridge. I highly doubt these guys are going to do anything. And yep, there we go. Scattered and run at the uh, just before contact. And I guess that will be the fight for Pittsburgh Landing. So overall, I mean, it's uh, it's an alarming battle at the very start of the game there. If you make the, any mistakes at the early portion there, it'll be definitely a very, very costly defeat. And, uh, well, it looks like uh, we, we issued 92 orders that game. We had a very historical casualties uh, number again. And we did, uh, well, we didn't beat, beat our record of tenfold enemy casualties as compared to the historical results. But I'll take uh, somewhere along double of those. So, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the Pittsburgh landing mission for, of course, uh, this particular game. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, as next time we will advance to uh, the second battle of Bull Run in just a little while. So, I hope to see you guys there, but uh, bye-bye for now.